Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Everett United Methodist Church. As in Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. We're coming to the end of the Easter celebration. Uh, Ascension is coming with uh, our Lord ascending to heaven and Pentecost. But before we leave the Easter season, I'd like to say, us to say one more thing. It's, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, if you take a moment, I know we can't hug or shake hands, but take a moment to uh, wave to your neighbor um, and, and say good morning. Will you experience God's love this morning? Or just say good morning. Uh, let's take time to do that now. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> Our opening hymn this morning is uh, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. to worship this morning is uh, if you'll respond to what's on the uh, screen. Praise Christ. Praise Christ. Praise Christ. Praise Christ. Praise Christ. For joy of the living God. And praise Christ. For he has given us life. Praise Christ. Here now and for our worship. Amen. Please say the opening prayer uh, together. Merciful God, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, you have lavished on us every spiritual blessing we could possibly imagine. Before the world was created, 
You already knew us and loved us. You adopted us as your own children and redeemed us through the blood of Christ. Even more, you have made us your heirs and given us your own spirit as a sign and guarantee. How we praise you. Open our hearts and minds to your presence among us here. May our worship this morning bring you honor and glory, for you alone are worthy of our praise. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. We will share in our first scripture. I will read Psalm 28, 6 through 9. Bless the Lord because he has listened to my request for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts him. I was helped. My heart rejoiced. And I thank him with my song. The Lord is his people's strength. He is a fortress of protection for his anointed one. Save your people, God. Bless your possession. Shepherd them and carry them all for all time. And the lesson this morning from the New Testament. I invite you to, to join me on a tour of an ancient city called Ephesus as we will be talking some about the early church that was established there, um, in great part because of the evangelistic efforts of the Apostle Paul. And in this place, which is now modern-day Turkey, um, there was a, a significant church established in a very pagan and secular uh, environment. But as I read this, I, I, I sense Paul's excitement as, as he has heard news. This is years later after he left. Paul had spent two to three years in Ephesus, a very long time establishing the church there. And then later on, he was in prison because of the gospel. And Paul wrote a number of letters that we call epistles um, from incarceration, uh, house arrest, if you will. And this is one of those letters, and uh, he was quite excited to share encouragement with this early church at Ephesus. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, to the holy and faithful people in Christ Jesus in Ephesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven. God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. This was according to his goodwill and plan and to honor to his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the Son whom he loves. We have been ransomed through his Son's blood, and we have forgiveness for our failures based on his overflowing grace, which he poured over us with wisdom and understanding. God revealed his hidden design to us, which is according to his good will and the plan that he intended to accomplish through his Son. This is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God 
who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first to hope in Christ. You too heard the word of truth in Christ, which is the good news of your salvation. You are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit because you, too, because you believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance, which is applied toward our redemption as God's own people, resulting in the honor of God's glory. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. time of um, prayer before we uh, enter into the message this morning. Um, in your bulletin are a list that I want to call your attention to of praises and prayer requests. A few others have come our way. I would like to lift uh, the name of Jeff Calhoun, who has a recurrence of his cancer. Um, lift him in prayer. And also for Sandy Shaw, who has an upcoming surgery. Um, this Wednesday. Any others that we can lift and, and uh, before, before our body here this morning? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let us go to the Lord in, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pause before you and set our hearts and minds in your direction. We thank you for the fellowship that we have with you and with each other here in this EUMC family. We lift ourselves to you. We praise you for the spirit, for the, your Christ, which you place in our hearts, which you place in our midst. Lord, there are many uh, within our family that are in need of your prayer. We lift them to you. We know that you answer even before we know how to ask. We thank you for answered prayer. We praise you for the ways that you make yourself known. We thank you and praise you for the choice that you make, for the determination that you make that we are to be yours, um, that you decide and determine before the foundation of the earth, before the foundation of creation. You have favored us, God, and we praise you for that. We place before you those uh, that were lifted this day, Jeff Calhoun, Sandy Shaw, the family of Jenna Heinish. Uh, pray that you would encourage and strengthen and bring healing where it is needed. God, we pray for the recovery of our communities from COVID, from so many issues that we face. God, you are never far, you are never absent in our lives, in our daily struggles. God, we pray for places halfway around the globe. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God, there is much that we lift before you and pray that you give us your peace, your presence, your guidance, your wisdom as we walk through our days as we pray that your kingdom would come. So God, as we gather here as your family in Everett, we uh, pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. For the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen and amen. So this morning, you have me to listen to. Pastor Dave and Lisa are away for the weekend. And I would like to uh, introduce the message this morning. Uh, We're going to be taking a bit of a journey through Ephesus. And I would like to share a couple of stories of some folks that I have met in Breezewood serving as the chaplain in the Breezewood Ministry, Trucker Traveler Ministry. This is a message about being chosen and found by God. The three, the three words that have jumped out at me from this scripture in Ephesians is being chosen, being destined or determined by God before the foundation of the earth, and being favored by God. Very powerful um, words that indicate God's intentions, God's plan, and God's purpose. It's all on Him. If it were on us, we'd be lost because we don't always um, consistently make the right choices to choose God for our lives. So I want to start with this little story about a shepherd who is missing a sheep. So he heads out into the fields looking for this lost sheep. And in the process of looking for his sheep, he loses his Bible. He had his Bible with him. So he's all distraught, and he heads back to the farm, and three weeks later, sure enough, the sheep shows up with the Bible in his mouth. And the shepherd puts his hands up to heaven and says, it's a miracle. And the sheep replies, no, it's not. Your name was written on the inside cover. (laughs) So I start the message today with that little joke. God does better than offer us a Bible with our name printed on the inside cover or the outside cover. God chooses us, and he writes his word on our hearts and on our minds. It's very good news. I'd like to share a story about a a man that I've met in Breezewood. I have a wonderful opportunity to encounter folks from all different walks of life, many truck drivers, travelers, some of the employees, staff people that work in Breezewood, some that live in the local motel community. And so one of the folks that I was able to meet this spring, his name was Billy, gave me permission to share his story. Billy grew up in St. Louis. His mom was really young when she had him, age 15, and she didn't do very well uh, in those early years. Billy ended up in the hospital as a toddler with hair dye in his stomach, had to have his stomach pumped or he wouldn't have lived. It was very difficult upbringing for Billy. He was raised by a bunch of gangsters, outlaws, mobsters, drug addicts, and drinkers. Well, as Billy ended up uh, in juvenile detention for about three years, incarcerated, before he even became an adult. And so as he became an adult, he was following in the family business, if you will, and his life was not going in a good direction. He did share with me that there was one point in his life when Uh, in his early 20s when he actually had an apartment, paid his rent, had a job, and was rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. And he named some names of some of these famous actors and singers that he was rubbing shoulders with. And he said, yeah, that was back in the day when it was a status symbol to to take cocaine. If you were anybody, you you were in that scene. So he was well immersed in this partying life, and um, it wasn't going well for him. He ended up drifting from town to town, and he lived in motel rooms. And at one particular point in 2010, he was on the bad end of a drug deal that went very sour, and uh, he was on the wrong end of a bumper pushed up against a building 
broke all kinds of bones in his legs and he got beat up. Ended up in ICU in a hospital for about a, w a month and a half. And before his surgeries were completed and his treatments for his multiple injuries, he just left the hospital, signed himself out, and so he never healed quite right and ended up in a wheelchair. So he motors around from that point on across America in a motorized wheelchair. And so in 2013, in this wheelchair on a street corner in Alabama, he was doing his thing, hating the world and everybody in it. Those were his words. And he's visited by a family, a young family, two young children, mom and a dad, and they're handling, handing out Bible tracts. And his usual response would just be to blow them off. But he was struck somehow by the innocence of these two young boys, these two young children. And he decided, oh, I don't want to set a bad example for them. So he accepted the tracts, and he ended up reading them. And he prayed the sinner's prayer. And something happened. The Holy Spirit came over him in such a powerful way. He said, I couldn't explain it. He said, I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is LSD. No, I didn't have any, I didn't have, have any drugs this morning. It was the Holy Spirit had overcome in him in such a powerful way that deep in his heart and his mind, he knew this wasn't drugs. This was something else. And at that moment, he knew everything was going to be okay. He would be safe. He would be secure. He was at peace. God was in control. From that moment on, Billy changed on the inside. That doesn't mean his life cleaned up and, and things changed immediately and he started living life like a saint from that point. There were a lot of habits and addictions and things that Billy was dealing with on a daily basis in his life. So as he continued to travel, and Billy, by the way, today is 65 years old, so this conversion happened in his 50s. And so in his travels, he ends up in Breezewood. I come in on a Monday morning, and there he is camped out in front of the ministry office door on the second floor of the Gateway Plaza in Breezewood, PA. And he's got his wheelchair, and he's, he's telling me his story. And so I get to hear some of the life of Billy. And from the travel plaza, he trans transfers to a motel room and spends the next five weeks in a motel room in Breezewood. And Billy struggled with staying out of the bar. There's only a couple bars in Breezewood, but he struggled staying out of them. And he struggled staying off of his addictions. But the thing that disarmed me about Billy was his honesty. And I had conversations with him almost daily during those weeks and got to know him. And we prayed together. And he was trying to get his needs met food-wise and lodging and calls to the various agencies, trying to plan the next leg of his trip. He's actually probably still in Somerset from Breezewood. He went to Somerset. And he had a battery that was going bad in his motorized wheelchair and we assisted, and Love Inc. assisted with a new battery. and So all of these things, these daily concerns, health concerns and food concerns, we're, we're talking and, and praying on a daily basis. But the thing that disarmed me about Billy was when he messed up and when he lapsed back into those bad habits, his first contact and first call would be either to me or to come visit me and to share his confession. I was moved by his honesty. And so in my conversations with Billy, I affirmed him in his progress, not his perfection. 
we're all a work in progress. Well, at least I'll admit. And I think we all can admit. We don't get to that place of perfection. We are all hopefully, prayerfully making progress. John Wesley said, we're moving on to perfection. We'll never get there. Only Christ. But we're a work in progress. And so, as life was difficult for Billy, he had spent 27 years total incarcerated. Operating in the freedom of, the, of life was very difficult for him. So I make the transition as Billy roams 21st century America and ends up in Breezewood, Pennsylvania. The human experiences that that reveals could be translated to 2,000 years earlier in first century Ephesus. And so Ephesus is this bustling city of the empire, one of the, the hinge cities of the empire at that time. And there's this huge temple in this pagan culture, the temple built to the goddess Artemis, or in the Roman, it's Diana, the goddess of the hunt, the goddess of fertility, the goddess of childbearing. And so I think about these very proud people, the Ephesians, they wanted to call their own shots and run their own ship. They even turned down Alexander the Great and his desire to finance the, the construction of this huge temple, which was one of the seven wonders of the world at that time. It was humongous. And so Ephesus became known far and wide for, um, for Artemis and for this temple. But what I want to tell you, because of Paul's preaching and many others, the church interrupted Ephesus. Life changed for the Ephesians. They didn't always like it. In fact, there's another passage in the Bible about Demetrius, who was one of the silversmiths, who made these little silver casts of Diana and sold them and made quite some profit. So he was whipping up the artisans and saying, hey, we got these guys coming in our town. They're speaking like, you know, a God made with hands. Human hands is no God at all, and our business is falling off. What are we going to do about this? Paul had upset the apple cart, but the church did get established in a strong and powerful way. The Holy Spirit was relentless. Paul's preaching was relentless. He was there in Ephesus about three years. Even the handkerchiefs that had touched Paul were then given to those who were diseased and ill and lame, and they were healed. Powerful, powerful things were happening in Ephesus. Billy's life was interrupted by the church in a very good way, supernaturally interrupted. And Billy knew that he was safe, he was secure, he was loved destined to be brought into the family of God. The church in Ephesus interrupted all that they knew. When God chooses you or me, life is interrupted. God had a much better plan for the city of Ephesus, the people of Ephesus. He had a much better, he has a much better plan for us. It is not enough just to live, to survive, to get enough to eat, enough, to, enough sleep and entertainment. God has a better plan than us just satisfying our flesh. I'd like to share a story of another gentleman that I've met in Breezewood who gave me permission to share his story. His name is Marshall. I've known Marshall since 1992. He's lived most of his life on the road. 
Marshall's in his 70s now, and one of his stops through all those years was to come into Breezewood, and so I got to know Marshall through the years, and Marshall's the first one to admit it. Yep, my downfall, said, right out of high school, school I jumped into, into, he was actually set to go to college, wasn't able to do that because of a family situation, and so he went out into life with an appetite for wine, women, and gambling. And so for the next 30 years, 35 years of his life, that's how he lived. Town to town, gambling in the pool halls, and drinking and, and whining and dining the women. But things weren't going well for Marshall, and he knew it. He would wake up the next day after this hard partying, and he wouldn't remember where he was, what he did, why all his money was gone, and why he was sleeping in whatever room he was sleeping in. And he said, I don't want to do this anymore. And he remembers the day well, February 14th, 2006. That's his birthday, February 14th. He made a determination to quit drinking, and so that was his last drink. Fast forward a couple of years, about 2016, 17, he continues with his traveling, and he's in a motel room in Berkeley Springs, and he has this tremendous pain in his gut, and he cries out to God. He, he can't get to sleep. It's been bugging him for days. He says, God, please help me. And God did. And mind you, Marshall has been a committed skeptic his whole life, not convinced at all that God is who he says he is. But on this particular night in a motel room in Berkeley Springs, God answered his prayer. And so for the rest of the night, Marshall was able to sleep. The pain had abated. And the pain was gone for the next couple of days, couple of weeks, until he ended up in Bedford County. And he's in the Bedford ER, emergency room. And they were able to diagnose that Marshall had a significant tumor growing in his gut. That happened on a Wednesday. He was scheduled for surgery that Friday. And so the surgeon, Dr. DeBolt, removed that tumor intact. It had not metastasized. Marshall didn't even need any kind of treatments, chemo, radiation. And he's not had any gut pain since. And so in my conversations with Marshall, and he still has all these questions of God, I said, Marshall, you prayed to God. He showed up. Is that not a miracle? And he's prayed the sinner's prayer, but he still has his good questions. And Marshall's been one of my most regular people to Bible study. We're, we haven't resumed that because of COVID, but um, that's Marshall's story. And he's not afraid to share his story. God showed up and interrupted Marshall's party. And Marshall desires in his whatever years he has left to give back and to help others. When I think about what God reveals to us when he chooses us, when he determines, when he predetermines from the foundation of the world that we are to be his, when he favors us. That's all God. That's all his doing. That's how much he cares. That's how much he loves us. And it wasn't a decision on the whim. This is from the foundation of the world, the foundation of creation. And so the early church at Ephesus changed the environment, changed the landscape of Ephesus, of the people of Ephesus. The Ephesians, just like we do, have their hurts and pains and traumas and distractions and entertainments in life. But things change when God offers the best. And in this first chapter of Ephesians that we read, that's the message of how much God offers. I want to finish with 
this story as a way to explain that. A story about a mom and a little boy who go into the general store down on the corner and they're done with their shopping. They go out to check out and the owner of the store is behind the counter and he sees the little boy and he takes his jar of candy and says, here, you can have some. And so the little boy with wide eyes reaches his hand out, but then he pulls his hand back and he becomes very shy. And so the owner says, oh, here. He puts his hand in there and grabs a whole bunch and says, here, you may take this. And the boy grabs all the candy that the owner has given him and he's, of course, smiling ear to ear. And they get outside and the mom says to the little boy, his, her son, said, when that man, the owner, offered you that candy jar, why did you become shy all of a sudden and put your hand back? And the little boy looks up at his mom and said, Mom, his hand was much bigger than mine. So I want to close with that image in your mind. When God has something to offer us, it is so much better and so much bigger than anything we could grab for ourselves. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the great gifts that you give us. And it's, it's a handful, it's a heartful, and it fills us up. We thank you and we praise you that you have chosen us, chosen us, destined us, and favored us. That's all your gift to us. We're not always the best, God, at choosing you. Help us when we have those challenges in life. Help us to turn your direction and to give of ourselves to you, to have an open heart and open mind what you have for us. So God, help us to, uh, to walk in that chosenness this week and forever. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Okay, what's next? Where are we? Okay. Sandra will guide us through our ministry opportunities. We're going to have worship in the lot. It starts in June. Helping our modified Sunday school schedule this summer would be a a good uh, thing for us to do. Uh, thank you for your financial giving and for all you give. There's, there's more to giving than just finance. We, we appreciate your help at the church, uh, your singing, your being here, and also your prayers. Thank you. Now let us stand and sing the doxology to honor God. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
Thank you, Sandra, for helping this morning. Thank you, Hollis's, for doing our audiovisual. Thank you, Nathaniel, for playing. And thanks to our EUMC band. Good to have you all here this morning. By way of benediction, I pray that the Lord impresses upon your hearts in a powerful way just how chosen you have been from the very beginning. God determined it. God favors you by his grace. May you go forth in that knowledge and that love in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.